Hello, my name is James Bear. I'm with the WebLogic server team. I want to give you a quick demonstration of Coherence Web and also show you an advanced use case where we replicate Coherence Web data to multiple sites and multiple clusters. So what you're seeing in this case on this slide is a depiction of a typical Coherence Web layout where we have application servers in one tier that instead of storing session state themselves only have a pointer to a separate tier called the session data cache which is made up of standalone coherence servers that are um, what is known as cache servers and they're holding the primary copy of the session state. The application servers can keep a small near cache which will allow them to um, give very fast results to local information that they already have um, but that's size limited and the primary copy and the system of record would be in that secondary tier. One thing we've seen that is very common is customers start to use multi-sites in multiple geographies for things like disaster recovery and it's very common for them to want to utilize hardware in an active-active way in both locations. So one of the things that you can do with Coherence Web is apply the Coherence Incubator push replication pattern which would allow you to have both sites sharing data even though they're in separate Coherence clusters we can identify certain sections of data that we want to replicate to both clusters. So in this case I might have a cluster in Boston and I might have a cluster in San Francisco deploying the same web application. They are in separate clusters, separate WebLogic server domains, but using Coherence push replication, I can enable bidirectional replication of the session data, and we'll give you a demonstration of that shortly. The push replication pattern is on the Coherence incubator page, so if we look here, it's just at coherence.oracle.com, and there's a link here to get to the incubator. I'm using the release 10 of the incubator which is compatible with Coherence 3.7 and above and if you want to try these examples yourself I just downloaded them from the Coherence incubator examples which comes with this sample web application you'll see shortly. So if we just go look at the file system here where I unzipped that file it's a zip file and you'll notice that I have edited the build.xml file here that's what this backup is for and I also have added the set env.bat. So if we just go look quickly at that, that's just going to set my Java home, where I have Ant installed, where I have Coherence downloaded, and that way my shell knows where everything is. And I'll just go ahead and start up this example here. Um, if we go, I have a couple of empty shells set up and these shells have all had the environment set up in there. So what I'm going to do at this point is start my cache servers that will be the the tier that holds the data and I'm going to start two separate ones. The, the first one is for site one so let's go ahead and start that and while that's starting a cluster for me, and it's redirecting the log here, so let's go ahead and go look at that. Okay, great. So we started the cache server, and I'm going to go do the second one. Go see the log of that second server. And we also started that second server. So now what I'm going to do is start my WebLogic server sites, and these are in separate domains. So here's site one. I'm going to just start the server up and go into my 
domain 2. which is a separate WebLogic server domain. They're not talking to each other at all. They listen on different ports. They have no knowledge of each other. And while those are coming up, I want to show you something uh, briefly in the ant build here. If you want to build this yourself, you can use the ant war wls command which will build the application yourself. One thing to notice in the build XML is it's important to add this line to the end of your war wls task because you want to make sure that the application actually builds first before you deploy it. So that is something that they are working on and that may be updated by the time you view this video. Great, so now the server is started and both are running. So let's go back to our browser here and let's switch these tabs around. So you'll see here that this is 8080 and I'm going to access my web application that I have deployed there. This is a web application that has a session ID that is printed there. And 689 is how it ends. Let's go ahead and go look at the other side. And we also see that on site 2, we have the same session ID. That's because when we send cookies with the J session ID, we only look at the host name. And we can see that the contents are empty at this time. So on site 1, I'm going to put in some values A and 1. And now they're in A1. Now let's reload this. Yep, they're still there. Now let's go to site 2 and see if they're there. There we go. A and 1 in site 2. So now let's add a value in site 2. B2, add. The value's there. And let's go back to site 1. Now B2 is there. And we're back on site 1. So pretty straightforward. What we've seen here is putting values in the session, they immediately show up on another site. These sites happen to be co-located on my laptop for this demo purpose, but th that has nothing to, the, the location could be anywhere across the world, and they just use standard networking protocols to exchange the information, and that can work over a wide area network. A little bit more detail about the the classes that are built in this example, once you build the application, you actually can find that in the build directory and it creates a war file here. And so that's what I had deployed to my servers. Pretty straightforward example and I hope you enjoyed it.